People deluded. I'm here with a special guest. Charlie, how you doing, man? How you doing, my guy? I'm oh, good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Just like I was saying, office, apart from lockdown and not being able to cut my hair, I'm good, man. My family's in, in good health, so am I. I hope the same thing for yours. Yeah, they're all good, thanks. They're all good. Glad to hear yours are, yours are good as well. I appreciate that, man. What have you been doing to pass the time being locked down anyway, since as you can't play and train at, at Arsenal and whatnot? I've just been doing my Arsenal programme, trying to get out, going on bike rides, just keeping fit, really. And obviously, when I've got my spare time, I do like to go on a PlayStation with a couple of my mates, either from Arsenal or just, just my general mates, and just play, like, FIFA, Warzone, all that. So, yeah. So are, are, are you on PS4? Yeah, man. PS4. Yeah, I definitely got to smack you up at FIFA after this or something, man. I definitely, I've been waiting for someone to to show the thing to you. Amari Hutchinson, I smoked him last night. <laughs> hey, Amari, if you can hear this, he threw you under a bus for no reason, man. But it's good to see. What have Arsenal been setting you to do? You mentioned Arsenal have set you some stuff. What have, what have they set you exactly? So it's like a weekly program. So um, when I was at um, Hairlands. Uh, I trained Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Mm. Um, so, set me on those days. I have a conditioning um, session, and I have a football like activity, whether that be some skills or some keepy ups or bin shot challenge, something like that. Mm. And then for the thing, say for example, on Mondays you have to go on a five k run um, and time it on an app called Strava. And then Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays we have. Uh, like an outdoor conditioning, whether that be sprints, like slalom runs, different like types of exercises we have to do just to keep fit. And I'm out there um, on those days working hard. And on the days I have off, sometimes my time to chill. Or if it's a nice day, I'll even go out on a bike ride um, and just keep keep fit. So yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm just raring to go back, really. Decent, man. It's nice to hear you keep ticking over. It's nice to hear you're in constant you know, dialogue with your teammates and coaches and things like that. Are we hear they do a lot in terms of making sure you're mentally fine as well. Is there any sort of dialogue with Arsenal checking on your mental state and things? Yeah, I mean, um, we have, so like yesterday, we had a, a Zoom call as well um, with the psychologist and we were talking about the different um, phases of uh, pressure. So yeah. like how you cope on and off the pitch. Um, and yeah, we've just been ticking over um, with, like say, last week we were with the nutritionist. We have regular calls and just seeing how we all are. Um, so yeah, all the boys are in good shape and I think they're doing the exercises as well. So yeah, it's all good. I mentioned You mentioned nutritionist. Now, obviously you're under 16 to be under 18s next year. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure you have a good diet. Have you been making changes to your diet already or understanding the changes that if you put certain foods in your body, other re better results could happen for you? And how has your dietary needs changed already in your career? I've just been eating, obviously I've been eating three meals a day. I get up um, at a certain time, around maybe nine o'clock, half nine. I have something to eat. I've been eating a lot of cooked breakfasts where it's like, where it's been beans on toast or scrambled eggs, boiled eggs. Um, whereas normally if it went full, I would have um, like cereal or something like that. Um, and yeah, I'd have a, um, a lunch and a dinner. So I think now eating during lockdown, I think I've eaten a lot more and I'm yeah. feeling a lot more awake and especially the sleeping pattern of mine is, isn't as good as it would be on a normal day, say if I had football, mm. but I'm still managing to cope and yeah, so it's, it's all good. And like for the nutrition, I don't, I don't eat a lot of bad foods. Obviously I'm an athlete, I've got to keep fit. So yeah, I just always make sure I have the, have the right nutrients as well, which keeps me, which keeps me going and ticking over. Good stuff, man. It's nice to hear. It's lovely to hear. For someone so young, you take very much a big care in looking after yourself and you're very aware of the implications of not doing so. In regards to that, I know you're obviously at Arsenal now, but you know, you wasn't at Ars you didn't just end up at Arsenal. You obviously had to start playing football and whatnot. Take me back to your earliest times playing football. Who got you into it? What's some of your earliest memories with it? So my dad was um, 
back then, he um, he was a very good footballer, but he didn't have the opportunities back then as young footballers would have now. Um, and I looked up to him a lot when I was when I was growing up, and he taught me taught me a lot. And back then, I used to play. My first team was St Albans City, and it, it was ten minutes down the road. Every Saturday, we'd go there. And we'd, it would be like a game. There'd be no training sessions. It would just be a game. And then a couple months down the line, uh, Luton came in, Luton Town. Um, they came in for me. And yeah, I was there for five years as well. And I loved it there. It was really, really good. And then when I was 11, big teams like Man City, Tottenham, Arsenal and Chelsea, they, they all wanted me. And that was the dream come true, one of the or four of the biggest clubs in England and maybe even the world came in for me and it was obviously a delight. And I went to see all the clubs, went to have a look at them, their facilities and Arsenal, I chose Arsenal as the reputation for first team. They love to play their younger players and yeah, it was perfect for me I felt because it was only five minutes down the road from me, their academy um, in London Colney. So, yeah, I thought it was just a perfect place for me to be. And, yeah, I'm still loving every minute of it while I'm here. And I'm looking forward to what the future holds. Fantastic, fantastic to hear, man. That's something I can always see from you playing. You seem to carry the badge with a lot of honour. You seem to respect the badge. And you put in 100% commitment for not just yourself and the badges and the fans, but also your family that got to that point. So that's a great way to answer that. Obviously, being at Luton, tell me about tell me about Luton. Because, I mean, you came from it. Jack Wilshere, I believe Matt Darren's at a point was there. It seems to be a point... A, club that many people go to before the big boys take take advantage of such James Justin who's just gone to Leicester what is it about Luton that produces these players what sort of what is their sort of philosophy having spent five years or so within their setup well when I was at Luton um I always used, I played two one one two if not three years up and wow. just the trust that the coaches have on the players like the, for example there was a time when there was a session. Some some of the coaches, um, big shout out to my coach Jordan and James, who helped me a lot massively when I was there. Um, they would say in training sometimes, Charlie, te- don't pass the ball, dribble, take everyone on. It's just wow. stuff like that. And it was just amazing to see like the technique, the tactical side of the game, how much they've helped. And yeah, they're they're not the biggest club in the world, but they've gone from. I've been a big one. Well, me and my dad were a season ticket holder. And from them being in League, League Two and now, now in the Championship, is can tell that they're producing big players. And like you said, James Justin, who is a very good player, England and Leicester now. And yeah, Jack Wilshire, um, who, who was there, made his debut at Arsenal at 16. So yeah, I th- I've always got Luton in my heart and I'm going to keep following them. Um, yeah. They're very good. Was Luton your boyhood club then? Like the team you supported as a, as a kid? Well, they weren't my boyhood boyhood club. Um, but they've always now been there five years. They've always got a place in my heart, um, especially my dad. My dad supports them um, because they were, they've helped me a lot. Um, and I'm very thankful for that. So I've just got to keep working hard now. Now I'm at Arsenal. And... And I keep in touch with a lot of the coaches and a lot of the players. Um, one of their players, Tyrell Newton, who um, he's child at England. He's been on a few camps as well. So you can tell the coaches there aren't Mickey Mouse coaches. They're doing their job properly. They're, um, they're helping their players with everything possible. And so, yeah, and I respect that a lot. Really what do. Team did you, what team did you support as a boy? I've always supported Man United, but oh. I've also... I've always, right, I've now, always had. We're gonna change that. We're gonna change that to Arsenal, my guy. <laughs> no, go on. But Arsenal, yeah, I do, I do like Arsenal. Um, especially the Im- implications Arteta's brought in. Um, oh. I think he's a great manager. When I joined the first day, I joined Arsenal. Um, the 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 old dome that was there. I walked in to have a look, and I saw Arteta there. Wow, it's a sign. 
start his, as his son was playing. So, yeah, very, very um, nice thing to see. And now, obviously, him being head coach at Arsenal, um, and me trained with the with the first team a couple of times, and I've seen him, I've spoken to him, I've got advice from him. Yeah, it's just amazing, amazing. What was it? Okay, before we, I'm going to ask you about Arsenal and training with the first team, but I want to ask. Um, I've always wanted to ask this. I wanted to always ask youth players that have joined. I'd say with all due respect to Cat Three Academy and gone to a Cat One. How does it feel making that jump? Because with all due respect, Tat Luton, you was probably in a positive way, big fish in a small pond, one of the standouts. You still are for me. Like you've seen all my videos and all my tweets. I'm a captain of OFC. But it's like you've gone to Arsenal where it's kind of, it's less at play. The fact that you're good, the fact that you're a standout player is almost irrelevant because that's what brought you here. You're around every sort of player. Did you feel any pressure in that regard, stepping up to that or joining, leaving humble beginnings of Luton and stepping to Arsenal? Or did you just take it all in your stride and say, you know, it's just football at the end of the day? Yeah, I mean, I've just... Football for me is a game where it's a, it's a team sport, but you've got to have an element of um, believing and trusting in your own ability. When I was at Luton, there were two or three good, good standout players in each of the age groups. And now at Arsenal... There's a bit more, I'd say there's seven, eight, very, the very whole good. team, very good players that if they keep working hard, they, anyone could have a chance of making it. Mm. Um, but I mean, again, Luton were very, very good. And yeah, Arsenal are very, very good as well. They've both got their implications. Um, the difference is obviously are the facilities. One's a cat one, one's a cat three. Um, but yeah. Even watching Luton, like sometimes me and my dad go back to watch some of their 18s games, see some of my mates there. And the, the way they play is, it's not booting it up the pit. Not, yeah, it's, it's... Playing out from the back and that, yeah. You know, they're a cat three team. They play like cat one. And yeah, it's, it's really good to watch. So yeah, I just take it in my strides. Play, treat every game as another day to get better. And just keep working hard, being humble. That's fantastic to hear. You, that, that, that's one thing, I've, and I've told you off air before, that's one thing I really love about you. You're very mature and you're very wise and you don't let things get to you. What was, it, what was it like training with the first team? How did that come about? What exactly in terms of skills did you do? Which players was you like, wow, I knew you was a quality player, but seeing this, you really are special. And what was your takeaway sort of moments from that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was dream come true to um, get the opportunity to express myself and train with the first team. It came about when, so we had an under 18s meeting um, in the theatre at Arsenal. Um, yeah. And uh, Ken Gillard, the coach, um, Very good stepped, up, stepped out of the meeting and obviously spoke to Freddie Lundberg, who's part one of the coaches who helps Arteta with the first team. And Lundberg asked if, um, I could, me and one other boy, uh, would go over and uh, train with the first team. And Lundberg said that it wasn't for numbers. It wasn't to make up the numbers. It was because the games you played recently and the training, you've been working hard and playing well. And you, and you deserve to play up and train with the first team. And, and that's what Ken told me. And I was just really proud that it wasn't to make up the numbers if it was to make up the numbers, I would have been happy anyway. But to know that it was for my hard work and my effort great, um, yeah. made it even more special. And then obviously, I went down, um, got ready. I wasn't really nervous. I was more excited, but good nerves. Mm. And, um, relishing slept, it. Yeah, yeah, caught relishing the opportunity and moment. I went out. All the players were so welcoming, came and shake my hands, asked for my name. Um, and yeah, I, it was like a family. It wasn't like just mates. It was all we all came together like a family. Trains, uh, even in the warm ups, you've got Lacazette making jokes. Everyone's laughing. So yeah, it was a chill moment. And um, one player that stood out for me when I was on his team was Martinelli. The way he like drove with the ball, um, commit players, and obviously Bukayo Saka. Back in the day when I used to train with him at Hair Lens, and always. He was always top of his age group and um, everyone knew that he was going to be a big prospect and obviously he's done very well for, for the first team. 
and he was very good as well. So yeah, it was just really, really special day. And obviously, got back home, told my parents, and yeah, it was just what a way to end the day. Buzzing, man. I'm proud of you, man. You know I'm already, already proud of you. I really like the way you play football and the way you're beaming off this. I can't wait till you get another opportunity. Was it only one and only time training with the first team or was that just a standout for you? Yeah, I've trained twice now. Um, the second time, uh, I think it was Arteta that actually came and spoke to me uh, face-to-face and said, uh, we'd like you to come train the first team again. And like I said, I take every opportunity as it comes. Um, I work my hardest when, whether it's train with the 16s or train with the first team. They're both the same. Same I thing. Work the same. Yeah, same thing. Um, and yeah, it was just another incredible opportunity to relish the opportunity and just show who I am. Fantastic to hear. And I mean, you, 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 you are exactly what Arsenal want. You're a bloody good footballer. You've got all the technical skills that we want in our midfield. But beyond that, you're a wise head. And it is true what we say at the academy or what Arsenal say. We're not just trying to make players. We're trying to make decent human beings. So credit to Arsenal, credit to yourself and credit to the family. I've always wanted to ask you, Charlie, when I look at the way you play, you know, you've got your range of passing, you've got your positioning. Someone of your body and, sk- and sort of physique, you wouldn't have as being quite strong physically and down for the defensive arts. Um, and, and you stand out mentally. But what, is, what would you say is your biggest strength and weakness as a footballer? Or if not a weakness, what do you feel you need to work on and what you do well? well obviously now we're in lockdown, yeah? So it's, it's hard to... Obviously, I'd love to be going to the gym. I'd mm-hmm. love to be build up... I wouldn't say they're cool. they would I wouldn't say they're weaknesses, but things I'd like to improve on, mm. and I'm very happy that these are my uh, things I would like to improve on because they're little tweaks that I can adjust and help in my game, and that is my strength. Obviously, I'm I've always played a year or two up when I was at Luton, and last season or the season that's, um, but obviously it's got cut short. I've been playing the majority of, um, of my games with the 18s. Mm. Um, so obviously strength is something I'd like to improve, but that's going to come with me growing. Um, I'm only 16, with, yeah. 17 soon. So that'll come with my growing and my speed as well. I'm going to, when, hopefully when we get back soon, I'm going to, now I'll be there full time. I'm going to ask the coaches just to help me with like different techniques on my speed, my stance, all of that. And, that, and that's really what I think my weaknesses are. While I've been out on the, on the green around my area, I've been practicing my right foot. I think that's very good now. Um, and I'm going to use it a lot more, especially with those wide, long passing in games. Um, but I think my strengths, that, like you said, uh, range of passing. I think creativity and intelligence is mm-hmm. another thing as well. Um, I don't like to say all the strengths, but those are the ones that I've uh, I picked out and I've been told a lot about, especially from the coaches. Um, but yeah, just football in general, I just love the game. I just got to keep going. Go, go can't on. wait. Sorry, man, go on. Can't wait to be back. It's so long, um, staying at home, getting out, out and about. I just want to work on things that need tweaking. Um, ready for the future. You and me both, man. Like, I want to get... But you, as you know, I watch the 18s, 23s and the first teams. I love watching the 18s because you and a number of guys have got chances. In a tough season at that level, to be fair, and we'll, we'll, we'll get on to that. Um, did you play futsal when you were younger? Yeah, so when I was at Luton, um, part of their programme was um, futsal. And it, I, I loved it a lot. Like, I loved it as much as football back then because... It was, the difference was quick on the ball, you had to be, like, you couldn't take a time to think of, oh, I made a mistake, oh, I should have done that better. Because the, the game's gone by then, you can't, you can't, you need to react quickly. Um, and yeah, it was, it was really good to, good to watch and play. And then obviously when I got scouted for Arsenal, Arsenal's programme wasn't futsal. So when I joined Arsenal, um, one of my mates who played uh, futsal played for one of the best teams in England called Escola, who are a Brazilian team. So I joined them and I was there for five years and they were outstanding. Um, their, first, their first team who, um, who 
won the league. We always go every July, I think it was, we always go to Spain. Um, or we went to Spain for the last three years and played in the Costa Blanca Cup. And the likes of Amari, who joined late, he was there as well. Uh, Remy Mitchell, Brooke, they were all there. So it was, it was an outstanding team. And just the, I think, foot, unfair, man. Futsal, <laughs> Futsal, <laughs> who were Brazilian, also they spoke English. They just helped me develop massively, especially on my technique, my control, my tactical side of it, communication, not switching off, all of, all of it. It's just helped me move from futsal, put my, implementing my game from futsal into football. And I think, yeah, um, they're always going to have a place in my heart as well. And obviously now I'll be there full time. I've had to cut from futsal because mm-hmm. obviously rest, I need time to recover. As I've been there all day, I train every day, matches on a Saturday. So there's, there's going to be no time for me to actually train with them. So, yeah, I've had to cut that short. But obviously, weekends where I have off, I'm going to go back and watch them. I have to say hello to everyone. And, yeah, but there, futsal, I've loved. And so has my dad. We watched the World Cup. Um, when the World Cup futsal was on, we watched that on television. And, yeah, I, I advise a lot of young people who um, are starting – Round seven, eight, if they want to become very good footballers, I'd say yeah. futsal is a good platform to start. You're right on that. You're right on that. So obviously you've gone from, you know, you've 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 done quite a lot in, in your short years as a professional footballer. You've been at Luton, which is an achievement in itself, and staying there for a number of years. You've come to Arsenal and done the same. How tough is the how tough is it? Not necessarily for yourself, in fact for yourself if you wish, but I can imagine you've seen a lot of friends be released at both clubs. You've seen a lot of changes. You know, the first big milestone for your age group is obviously the scholars. Some people got scholars, some people didn't. What's your emotions around this? What's your feelings around such? Because this is when it really gets real in, in sorts. Yeah, I mean, the under-16 season is a big season to juggle. Um, obviously, you've got GCSEs um, for those year 11s, and then you've got mm-hmm. your scholarship. So it's really hard to weigh up. It's a big, big season for the under-16s. Fortunately enough for me, um, I was put in a position where I didn't really have to worry as much as I did as others, as I got my scholarship earlier. I got given it earlier. Um, so I was able to focus more on school mm-hmm. and obviously work as very, very hard at football, but I had the weight taken off my shoulders then. And I feel for... Arsenal, when, when players get released there, it's not, obviously it's a, it's a downfall, um, but it's not the end of the world because you've got the staff at Arsenal who are going to help you find other clubs. Like, people have gone to Rangers, people have gone to Swansea, so you're going to get big, you're guaranteed big clubs again. So I think that's one massive thing at Arsenal is that you, you know you're not, it's not the end of the world for you if you get released. Um, Can you hear me? Sorry, you cut out. You said it's not the end of the world if you get released. Apologies, people, for that. No, um, it's, yeah, it's not the end of the world if you get released because you're, you're guaranteed to find another club. And I feel and I, an advice that I'd give to those people is just to keep working hard. You got, you got to Arsenal because of a reason. You, you didn't get given there. You weren't there just for the numbers. You were given there because you have an ability. You have something. You have strength. So I say just use them to your advantage wherever you go next. Mm-hmm. You're fully right on that. How I, my next question would be: How excited are you to be a full-time scholar next year with a bunch of your players? Because you got you got you, you've got you've got Muro, you've got Amari, you've got Brooke, you've got Kion Edwards, you've got you've de- you got Flores. There's a there's about the, the whole team. You got Remy and Goal. There's a bag of you, and I'm happy as a fan to see you lot because I think we need some fresh blood in our 18s. How confident are all of you guys to more or less be playing all together on a full-time basis? Yeah, I mean, oh, it's raring, raring to go back. And obviously the under-16s, um, they had the coaches and all the staff handed out a lot of scholars, which is good to see, because then that shows trust and belief in their players. I, I believe the under-16s, going to soon to be first-year scholars, have got massive potential. And I think we've, we, we even have the potential to even win the league. Um, a lot yeah. of our boys... We've still got Miguel, we've still got Mazid, a lot of the, the first-year scholars, soon-to-be second-year, Daniel Igoki as well. Exactly. We've also got 
them. So I think the squad and the, the depth and of the squad is going to be very, very good. Got, yeah, very, very good. I think 17 yeah. players. Something. I think we've got about 18, 19 players. So, good yeah, squad. very good squad. See, I'm keen to see that, man, because with the league, I want to win the league and I share you, bro. But for me, you've got to bring that FA Youth Cup home. It's been too long away from the Emirates. I want to see us bring it. It was a bit disappointing how we went out, but we go again yeah. sort of thing. Talk to me about talk, talk to me about last season briefly, because if I remember correctly, there was the Under-16s Cup against Chelsea. Just how did you, what was your feelings around losing that? Yeah, that was, yeah, obviously it's not, a, not the nicest of feelings losing um, in the final to Chelsea. But shout out to them because they're a very, very good team. Us and them have always been a tough, when, it, when, it, when we come to play them, it's always been tough. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's always not nice to, feeling to win the Premier League Cup, especially on our ground at Bourne Woods, 5-2. I wouldn't have said that's the reflection of the score. Yeah. Um, we put up a good fight against them. I don't know what happened really. I think, it was a case of, we, I don't think we stuck to the game plan as well as we, we could have, as well as we should have, um, because the coaches um, put out a good game plan as well. The tactics were good. I felt that the players didn't execute what we, what we were supposed to do. And obviously, this year, we were in the final against Man City, but obviously it got cut short, cut short sadly, of, yeah. of the pandemic. But we go again. We move, we go again, we get better. Would you say that was a learning? Would you say it was a learning curve losing the final? Because obviously it was disappointing. But you mentioned game plan, the importance of as you get older, listening tactically to managers and remaining disciplined, regardless of what happens in a match. Yeah, of course. Like you said, um, we took a lot out of that game. I think a week later from that game, we all gathered up, uh, went into Arsenal, sat in the theatre, and just reviewed the game just went through what we needed to do better. And I think the next couple of games after that loss, the league, we, we won a lot of, we won, I think it was two or three games on the bounce. So I could tell that the players sunk in that information that was told from the coaches and we took it on board and we executed it in the, in the following three league games, which was good to see. And obviously the 16s, like I said, they're a very strong age group, um, managed to, we managed to get into the final this year, but a shame we were not able to play it. But yeah, so I think next year as well, the it would be nice if the under 15s, currently soon to be 16s, have the opportunity to get into a final as well because it is it's a good thing to relish. Yeah, I fully agree. I fully agree with that, Charlie man, and you've answered that question superbly. Talk to me about becoming an under eight. Well. Officially, you'll be an under-18s player next year, but you was more or less, a reg I'd say, a regular fixture within the side of the under-18s, a standout player. How's it, how did, what shocked you the most about stepping up to that level? Like, was it the physical, physicality? Was it the pace of the game? How did you deal with that? Because like you said, you're used to playing two, three, maybe even four years um, above. Um, how much was it, how hard was it to deal with the physicality and the pace of the game? And what shocked you around it? And how did you actually... Because you've been playing pretty consistent at that level for me. Like, I'm not just saying this because we're on the other line. Like, I've actually, you've been one of the standouts, despite being one of the youngest. So, yeah, mentally, talk to me. How do you make that happen? Yeah, I mean, there wasn't anything that phased me. Like, I wasn't nervous by playing up. I wasn't, wasn't going to change the way I played, if you know what I mean. But like you said, yeah, the speed of the game is a lot different to the under 16s, 15s. And the physicality of the players, because they could be two years above me or one year above me, either second or first year scholars. So that was, that's why one of my strengths I would like to work on is speed and strength. So I'm able to match what they're like, the opposition, because I think I've got the advantage of them when it comes to technique, tactical, because I think I'm very, I've got very good technique and I've and I'm listened to all my coaches, so the tactical side is there. But obviously, they've got the upper hand on the strength and speed because they're older, they've developed more. So that's something I'm going to I'm gonna have to work on. And I think it will come by me growing and me using the gym and the staff there, which is very good as well. 
do you think you've had to because of that you've said like you've got it's allegedly it's, it's clearly a waiting game you've got to wait on your body to grow do you feel you've yeah. had to look at other ways of getting an advantage in the sense that at one level you might have been able to barge a player but now you might have to think quicker and cover that space yeah. before it's become a thing exactly like so when with the under 18s you you can't take whereas with the under 16s you can have five six touches to try and get past the player with the under 18s you take that many many amount of touches you get smashed so yeah you've got to take two maximum three touches move the ball quickly play forward um and yeah just enjoy enjoy keeping the ball make having possession because when i tell you when i play it's a nightmare when they've got the ball and you're pressing pressing for the majority of the game so like i said just keep the ball ticking over and just move the ball forward that that's the only thing i'd say to adapt obviously when you've got for the likes of kido nathan they're on the wings 1v1 obviously you're not going to take mm-hmm. three touches back start again you're going to beat your defender because they've been so yeah but for a midfielder like when i play with like catalan or miguel or ben whoever's in midfield the coaches advise us to play two touch three touch move it quickly and yeah it's just it's like we play like barcelona sometimes and it, yeah it's just very good to see i personally feel the best players specific to midfielders do things in less touches they see a picture before it's happened and they do things in less touches who is your sort of, who do you model your game on, if anything? It could be a professional, it could be I, someone in your life. Who? I've always been a fan of Andres Iniesta, personally. Nice when, when I've always watched him, when he was at Barcelona, I thought him, Messi, Xavi, Busquets um, were magicians. But especially Iniesta, because I, I play, my favourite position is number, number eight, box to box. I can help with the defence. I'm, I'm not afraid to put in a tackle. And then I'm also creative on the offender on the attacking side. Mm. Um, and was it when I was an under 15 playing with the 16s, I managed to get 26 goals, 15 That's assists. Wow. Playing as number, and obviously this year I've had to do a job as a number four, which I don't mind that because obviously being versatile is something coaches look for. So obviously I haven't had the availability and the opportunity to go forward as much as I'd like to. And, get as many goals and assists as I'd like to, but was he starting with the 18s is a blessing. So, I mean, I'll take that opportunity every day of the week. So, hopefully, the when I start as a first-year scholar, I'd like to be playing as a number eight, um, getting the opportunity to go forward, score goals, and keep the tally up of getting goals and assists because that's what, ultimately, that's what players get paid for, is what they do. The attackers get paid the most because what, what they score and how many assists they get. So yeah, that, that's 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 it. You're a very self-reflecting person, and you like to analyze yourself. You, like I said, you've had a good season playing at under 18s. Is there a game that stands out for you in particular, in that you feel I've really played well today? I've re- everything I've tried to kind of happen. I've helped my team in the best way possible. And equally, has there been a game where you just haven't been able to assert yourself, and you think I am much better than that? This is probably the game I can learn the most from, sort of thing, at this level. Yeah, so the game I felt that I really, really played well. So, you know, after every game, you you always have that feeling where, where you know, right, yeah, I've played really well today. I'm very proud of myself. My parents are going to be proud because I know I've played well. Mm-hmm. That game I played, oh, I felt like that was Cheltenham in the FA Youth Cup under-18s. Oh, when we managed to... I think that game was one of my, one of my standout games. And... On this week, or I think yesterday it was, I put on Instagram one of the dribbles I did from from a throw in. I think, yeah, just that game was a game that I'm not going to forget. I'm not, I always analyse it because it was very good, but I mainly analyse games that I'm not so good in. So I think I'd say when we played, would would you under 18s or 16s? Well, it could one? be it could be anything. It's you, bro. It's you. It's you. Literally, I said 18s in the question, but it could be anything. Um, 18s. I think I could have done more against uh, West Ham uh, in the league. I felt that I played. I played all right, but to my what I know, I can do, and what my coaches know I can do. Um, they spoke to me after the game, said, "What's up? What's going through your head?" Um, and yeah, I have analysed that game many a times, and I know where I've gone wrong. 
and the following games after that I was able to play a lot better and help the team get get some wins so yeah I think the West Ham game was a game where I could have done better and yeah I analy I've analysed that a lot who, who oh it's cutting up sorry Charlie speak it's cut out a bit can you hear me hello oh yeah you, you can speak I think we caught everything I'd have yeah. to ask you as well who's the best player you've played with and played against well, there's I many, many ones. I had to ask it. Many, many talents I've played against, and many players, I play, many talents I played with. I'd say against the best two players that stand out for me is when I played against France with England under 16s was Hannibal, who's now at Man United now. Hannibal, Hannibal Medbury, the midfielder, oh. very, very good player, tough one um, to play against the midfield. So I keep in contact with him because we we both play similar to each other um, and when I played against Spain um, Carlos Al Alvarez plays for Sevilla very small technical nippy um, player very very good um, when I played in midfield he was difficult to tackle um, so they're the two that I'd say that are very uh, difficult to play against but players with so you've got the likes of Jude Bellingham Harvey Elliott Mao, all of those but yeah, it's very hard to mention. Very hard to mention. But yeah, good question. Charlie, I'm going to call you back in a second to continue this just because I've got an alert on my computer. It says we've gone over the Zoom thing and it's going to cut out in a minute. So rather than ask another question, literally let me call you back in a second. Cool. Yeah. Apologies for that, people. There's nothing me or Charlie can do about technical difficulties. We was having a great chat and I was learning a lot. And he was offering a lot of nuggets in relation to being a professional footballer for club and country. Let me ask you about England because, you know, I, can, I can't imagine really and truly because, I mean, every, every top player or every, every top young prospect is being watched at international level. What's the process of being a young player and playing at, at youth level? Is there a sort of trial, trial in camp you lot do? Is it just word of mouth? How does it, the whole process work in relation to playing for your country? So I started um, playing as an under-15, um, now I'm under-17, so I've been there for two years wow. and I've loved every minute of it. But for, to start there, um, it was about 26 boys joined at the start of under-15s. England starts under-15s. Um, so 26 boys, or roundabout there, start, go to St George's Park and it's a training camp, so we'd have three or four days on camp where each day we'd have two or one if not two training sessions and um yeah you just got to enjoy the moment the thing about England I love is the, the co we have a lot of meetings and the coaches show the England way the DNA we have to follow like the first team and the, what I like about the coaches there is they they say to all the players express yourself Training, try something new, rainbow flick, all of all the all these different skills that um, that aren't normal. They, they 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 want you to try it out, and yeah, I think it's just really good starting starting point. Obviously, down the line after the camp finished, they they talk, they analyze which players they like, this and the other, and yeah, under sixteen, under sixteens again. They picked you for games. So my debut was Belgium mm. against Belgium um, at St George's Park. And yeah, that was a fun game. And just since then, I think I've, been, I've gone back most of the camps. And I think it's just down to hard work, being focused. I've got a good network support around me that helps me, my family, my agent. So yeah. You get started as a trial. You just gotta work hard. It's, mm. it's not rocket science. You just gotta do, show your best, do, do everything you need to do, and yeah, you hopefully you should get the call back. And then if you don't get the call back on, on one camp, you shouldn't be frustrated. You shouldn't feel down hard. Up because all the Ask England coaches, they come down to watch your games. And they, they, they just watch you. They see how's he done this game. They analyse your game. 
and we have when we're at England, we have a lot of meetings, whether that be the game we've played at England or whether that be at an Arsenal game or mm. whoever team it is. So yeah, I know a player that played at under 15s at England, did fantastic at under 16, uh, did fantastic at under 15s. Apologies, didn't play a single minute at England in the under 16s, and then got. But because he was working very hard, he got called up for the under-17 Euros. So, yeah, it doesn't matter if you're not called up. James Justin, he didn't play for England. Another uh, Luton player didn't play for England when he was at Luton. But now he's stepped up to the plate. He's at Leicester. He's in the England squad under-23s. Yeah. So you've always got that opportunity. If you, you're not guaranteed in that team, you're not guaranteed in that team, you're guaranteed in that team if you keep working hard day in, day out, on and off the pitch. It's a fantastic... I mean, you, that was a fantastic way of answering that. And you said something really magical there. Work hard, it's not rocket science. I think that can be applied to anybody in life. If you work hard, things happen for you, doors open. Do you find you have to be... Uh, when I say assertive, I don't mean, you know, you have to be problematic. Pardon me? Oh, sorry, I thought I heard something. Um, like I was saying, do you feel, obviously, stepping up, and I don't feel many change rooms change, whether you're in the first team, whether you're under 16s or whatever. Do you feel being one of, typically because of your ability, you're playing up, do you feel being one of the younger players, you have to be a bit more dominant or assertive? To, to I won't say necessarily to command respect, but to, for want of better words, to command respect. Obviously, your football does the talking eventually at some point. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Um, so I think that when I joined, when I started playing games of the under 18s, um, I felt that the players weren't passing the ball to me as much as I'd like to. Even though I was commanding for the ball, I was shout, shouting at them, saying, Pass the ball, this, that, and the other. Mm. Um, but as you keep playing with them, as they get gain your respect, whether that be in training or matches, then they'll talk to you, they'll pass the ball to you, and yeah, you'll just like sink in with the players. It doesn't matter how young you are, it matters about how your ability, like you said, Jack Wilshire, Rooney, they've all they all play for the first team in matches at the age of sixteen. And that wasn't their age. That wasn't that was because of their ability and their hard work. So now with the under eighteens, they all talk to me, we all have jokes, we'll cuss each other, all of that. It's just, <laughs> you've just got to, the longer you're in there with the, with the, with the boys, the more they're going to know you as a person and as a player and the more they'll have trust in you. Mm -hmm. Who are you closest with? I know you're, everybody's close with everyone at Arsenal and the fa a great family club and it's, it's great, but who do you find yourself spending the most time with at the 18th? I have the 18s, the most time I'd say I have a Daniel, um, Daniel Egoki, which is one of, my, one of my best mates. Obviously, I was at school with him, mm -hmm. um, uh, secondary school. And Hubert as well. Because us three, we're about all O3s. We, we, go on, we go to England together. So, yeah, Hubert and Daniel, I'd say, um, are the two I'm closest with. And then with the under-16s, I'd say the two I'm closest with is... Um, Kaon and Amari. I always very good played man. them on FIFA, played them on Wars, played with them on Warzone. So yeah, they're, they're the... That makes sense. Um, I've always wanted to ask you as well. Um, I've, I've always wanted to ask you, I know you're eligible to obviously play for England, but is England the only country you're eligible to represent one day at international level? Nah, so um, my dad is Spanish. Um, his parents, my dad's parents live out in Spain. So I, I also have the availability to play for Spain as well. And obviously I played against them and I, was, and I had the opportunity to captain them on their home, home soil in front of my parents and my wow. Spanish grandparents, which was an amazing feeling. So yeah, I've got the opportunity to play for Spain as well. 
that's 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 I mean let's hope let's hope you stay and play for England you know we we keep you at England we need you but it's suddenly all starting to make sense now I mean you've got Spanish roots it makes sense as to why you're a midfielder and play so well in midfield I wanted to finally ask you to wrap this thing to wrap this video up and wrap this thing up being a young professional footballer and about to make your journey what do you think is the single strongest attribute you need as a professional footballer to make it is it mental strength is it something physical is it belief in yourself is it confidence is it arrogance what would you say it would be i think you've got to weigh up all those options and balance each of them out so i'd say mental state is massive so three years ago or four years ago i broke my ankle Oh wow! Against Watford, and I was out for seven months. And seeing all the boys on Saturday play football, play the matches was very hard because obviously I wasn't able to go out onto the green and play football with them, especially when they're playing matches. Mm. So you've got to have, so that mental state there help obviously that with the help of the side there is big, and they helped me a lot um, when I broke my ankle. And obviously, you've got to have that self-belief. Belief where in your own ability, in your, in your capability of what you can do. Mm -hmm. And you've got to, have, like Ronaldo does, he has that arrogance. He thinks he's one of the best players in the world. You've got to have, like, like I said, you've got to have a bit of everything in your, in your locker, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And just pull it out when needed. You're one hundred percent correct. You're one hundred percent correct on that. I was going to wrap this up there, but I want to ask you about that injury because I think it's very interesting. Um, I knew you've been through a lot as a young player, but definitely didn't know about that injury. How did that happen? So I it was on it was on a Saturday game at Hayland. Um We were playing Watford at home at Hayland. Yeah, and one of their attackers. Um, I had the ball, I had the ball, he was frustrated because I tackled him and he just came and like his, his foot, his studs just came into my ankle and I oh. twisted my ankle and then from there I had to be stretched off the pit, gas mask, everything. Wow. Yeah, it was very difficult and um, yeah, I got taken to hospital, have an operation uh, to put a screw in. Metal, metal screw in hmm. and then that down the line a couple months later had to have another screw and yeah it was really painful but I think something that injury has helped me massively with my mental strength and just with everything because I feel for a lot of players who have had big injuries because I, one thing I was worried about is that I wasn't going to get back to where I was before I broke my ankle I thought Mm. It's gonna. My ankle's gonna be weak. It's not gonna be able to function as well as my. Well, not. It was my left side as well, and that's what footed I am. I won't be able to kick as well with it. So all these things were running through my head as to when I would be back fit. Um, with this mind, with this ankle in my mind, knowing that I'm not gonna be uh, back to where I was. Mm -hmm. And for some players, um they've had a long-term injury and they haven't been able to get back to full, um, full where they were before. Yeah. So yeah, I'm very grateful and I'm thankful with all the support, help, everything, family, coaches, stuff, that I'm back better and stronger than where I was before when I broke my ankle. I have to ask you in relation to that, when I had an ankle injury, when I was playing football, not to your level, but when I came back, I'd say the physical wounds heal, but mentally I was kind of scared. Like if I kick this ball, I'm going to go through the same thing again or it's going to hurt. Did, you, did that sort of play any part in your mind? Was you a bit scared that, you would, that it would happen again or if you did certain things? And did you feel it affect your game if it did? So, like, with me, I'm a, I'm a midfielder, so I can't shy out of tackles. I have to put my foot in, to, whether it be a slide tackle, whether it be a 50-50, I have to put my foot in. Mm. So, obviously, I was nervous. I was scared when I got back. First couple of games in, I got back whether I was going to go in for that, and I didn't. I had to, I have to be honest, I didn't go in for 50-50s when I first got back into it. But now, 
I feel confident. My ankle's fine, back to full strength. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I put my foot in, slide tackle when needed. And yeah, I'm, I'm back to normal now. And one interesting thing, when my first game back um, from injury, we played Reading and I was only due to play 20 minutes. Mm. Um, we were 2-2 two, two up and then I came on and I think in the last minute of the game, was the winner to make it 3-2. So that was another big um, like special brilliant. day for me. And that's another game that stands out for me as, a, as the phys- physio that had been helping me with my rehab um, the whole time for those seven months while I'd been out, was there at the game. And so, yeah, I celebrated with, in front of her, went and gave her a hug to say thank you for all the help you've given me. So, yeah, that was a really good end to that day there. That's fantastic, man. That's a fantastic end to a long, hard journey in injuries. But Charlie, it's been fantastic speaking with you. You've dropped an, a few wonderful nuggets of knowledge and it's been really yeah. good talking to you. Um, I'd love to do this again, obviously, um, from Football Permits. and You've made some progress playing as a first-year scholar. I'd like to catch up with your progress. But once again, thank you very much for taking part of your day, busy time and schedule to do this with me. And I know the fans will appreciate it and we're wishing you all the best in your career. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just let me know whenever and I'll be here. No worries, man. Take care of yourself.